Hello, my name is Peter Marinian, and I am a senior systems engineer from F5, focused on developing security solutions for global systems integrators, including IBM. The purpose of today's demo is to show you how easy it is to protect critical applications with F5 proactive bot defense. With that, let's jump into a quick slide to explain the solution a bit more, and then we'll jump into some of the demonstration scenarios. Of this feature is really to provide additional visibility to the application security uh, community um, and those custodians in charge of the applications while also providing uh, mitigation capabilities, JavaScript challenges, and other um, tools to protect your applications. So with that, let's actually jump into some of the F5 configuration and then we'll walk through a couple of scenarios where you can see these capabilities in action. What we'll do is review some of the basic uh, configurations for how we make the application available via the F5 because they come into play with how we enable the security capabilities that we've discussed thus far. So first what we're going to do is we're going to look at the pools. We've created this DBWA pool uh, for this particular demonstration and as you can see at the moment there is just a single member uh, and that pool number is defined to listen for traffic on port 80. So we're expecting HTTP traffic for uh, this particular application. <clears throat> One of the other things we're going to go and look at are some of the statistics. Uh, with this application, you can see it's been somewhat busy lately. We're going to reset some of those statistics for now. So we can follow along while we do the demonstration. So that essentially, the 10.1.20.17 represents the web server that is going to make uh, this particular web application available to users that browse to it. There's another level in between though. Uh, what we have created is a virtual server um, and one or more pools will belong to uh, a virtual se server configuration. So here's our DVWA virtual server. We'll click in. We notice the address that, uh, the destination address that we're listening for, as well as the port, which is in a, alignment with what we saw with our pool, port 80 HTTP traffic. Furthermore, within the virtual server settings, we have security. And we click on the tab and we look at the policies and we see that we have enabled a bot defense profile um, and we're going to log any uh, events that occur within the environment related to um, this bot defense profile. And we'll see that in action here in a few moments. But at this point, we, we really have what we need to get started. Uh, the last thing I should show you is what is actually contained within this bot defense profile. So we'll click into the security tab and we'll go to DOS protection, DOS profiles, and we'll click on our bot defense profile. This contains the definition of how we want to protect the application against automated botnet attacks and other denial of service risks. So you can see that we have application security enabled. We also have some bot signatures enabled here. And if we click into the details of the bot signatures, there are a number of malicious and benign categories listed. And we've defined um, the actual actions at this point to just report to the application security owner uh, any of these events or tools that may be being used against the application, as well as uh, some of these others below, like crawlers, HTTP libraries, uh, search bots, etc. So we do not have the proactive bot defense enabled at this time, but we do have signatures uh, enabled, which allow us to gain visibility into some of the attack traffic. A putty window and we're going to log into our, our big IP system via SSH one of the things we're going to do is just run a simple curl command against this particular web application you can see when we run the curl command we get a response back uh, from the application itself how the 
HTML is defined, um, some of the different parameters that are present within the application code itself, things like usernames and passwords. Um, so we get some feedback from the application without really exuding much effort whatsoever um, that could be used as a, an initial recon. Uh, beyond that, attackers have many, many tools available at their disposal. If you're familiar with Kali Linux, there are dozens of tools focused on uh, reconnaissance, pen testing, web application security. Um, and one of the tools we're going to highlight here in the test today is the OWASP Z attack proxy, also referred to as ZAP. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically do the same thing as the control command, is we're going to define the attack target. And we're going to run an attack. Essentially what this tool will do is it will crawl the site, it will start to um, understand how the application is, and it will even uh, attempt to exploit certain OWASP top 10 uh, vulnerabilities such as cross-site scripting or SQL injection based on how the attacker defines um, their specific attack. So let's take a break from the attacker for a second. <clears throat> And let's go and look at some of the event logs that were just generated. Because they attack the application. And I'm gonna make this full screen. What you can see is there are a lot of requests against the DVWA virtual, which is of course the one that we're concerned with. And you can see a lot of detail, uh, including request URIs, etc. What you'll find, given our current configuration, is that all these activities are being allowed right now. We can see that they are marked as legal and the action is allow. Um, and the reason is because our proactive bot defense is currently inactive. Remember, we have the signatures enabled. Uh, the signatures picked up this activity, including the curl command from earlier and some of the things that occurred with uh, the, the zap proxy. Um, but we don't have enough configured at this point to protect our application. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go back now to our pool. And we're going to look at the statistics for the DVWA pool. And remember, we reset those just a few moments ago. After I ran the curl commands and some of the zap proxy, you can see that we've had a decent amount of traffic in and out. Uh, of the web server itself. So that traffic is reaching that backend web server. So I'm gonna reset these statistics and it'll, you'll understand why in a few minutes, why, why I'm focusing on the statistics here in terms of how we're ensuring security of the application. So what I'm gonna do now is go back into the security tab and go back into my DOS profile, bot defense profile, and it's really as simple as clicking into the bot defense and enabling this feature. There's no learning period or policy tuning really required with this feature. It's essentially something that you come in, define, align with your virtual servers of choice, and you've got protection in place. So you can see when we enable proactive bot defense, we have some other optional features we can configure, such as uh, capture challenges, um, and that'll be something we'll get into in another demo at another time. But for the point of today, what we want to focus on is some of the unique JavaScript challenging um, and web scraping prevention capabilities that we have within this feature. So we're going to click update to this policy. And now not only do we have the ability to protect the app using our bot signatures, but now we have proactive bot defense enabled so that we can better protect our application against some of the attacks we showed a few moments ago and as well as many others. So let's go back to the attacker's point of view. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually launch another putty window. We're going to SSH back into our system here. And we're going to run the curl command again. You'll notice 
that this time, instead of receiving information back about the application in terms of the parameters and the HTML, which could be useful to an attacker, you'll notice right away at the bottom of the screen, it states, please enable JavaScript to view the page content. Essentially what's happened here is Proactive Bot Defense has presented um, this headless browser with a JavaScript challenge. And given the fact that JavaScript is not enabled um, and the fact that it's an automated bot style attack, it has no way to respond to the JavaScript challenge. And so the response to the curl command is essentially uh, a bunch of characters and other data that's vastly unreadable and pretty useless to the attacker themselves. The other thing we'll do is we'll flip back into the attacker's desktop itself. Let's log back into that. And we're going to run another attack using the OWASP Z attack proxy. Uh, similar thing, we're going to crawl the site. We're going to try to exploit some of the OWASP um, vulnerabilities, including SQL injection and so forth. Um, and you can see this tool is really easy to use and provides a lot of value from the perspective of the attacker. We want to create friction for the attackers and reduce their ability to um, effectively interrogate or infiltrate our application um, using tools like this. So this should be enough to get us started. Uh, we've got some attack entries in there. Let's stop these. Now let's flip back to our big IP administrator view for a moment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into the event logs, just like before, bot defense. And let's make this big screen. And you'll notice that we've got some new entries uh, based on our time here, 9.32 AM Eastern time. And still a number of requests going to the same virtual server address, 10.1.10.21, which represents that DVWA <coughs> uh, web application on port 80. And what we'll find as we scroll back across is that we start seeing legal requests, which were once allowed, uh, which was last time, prior to enabling proactive bot defense, changed to challenged in the request status. And this means big IP proactive bot defense is challenging the browser. Um, and what it's found here based on the response is that there's no valid cookie. So the challenge is not possible and based on this, we are going to deny um, the traffic. We're blocking uh, that type of traffic at this point from that particular source, given, given the parameters defined here for proactive bot defense. So right away, we can see that this is having an impact and it's as simple as a few clicks of the mouse to enable this and roll this out on your uh, virtual servers within your big IP configuration. Uh, again, I want to highlight how easy it is to turn this on and, and realize pretty much immediate value from a security perspective at layer seven. The final piece that I want to show you um, is goes back to the statistics we were tracking earlier. So if everything worked appropriately, we should see no traffic hitting the backend pool member uh, for this particular DVWA application. And that's because I'm blocking all those attacks outside uh, at the virtual server level using proactive bot defense. So let's go back to our pool. We'll go to DVWA pool and we'll go to statistics. And what you'll notice is there are no bits or packets or connections in or out of the big IP for this particular pool member and web server for DVWA. So this is our proof that none of the traffic uh, the botnet traffic that was generated by the attacker, whether it be the curl command or the OWASP zap proxy, made it to the backend web server. So we've ensured that the application server and the web server is protected um, and that at this point in time, the customer can go about their business confidently that they are protected against uh, bots and other botnet activity that may try to infiltrate their application. This concludes our demo for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your appropriate F5 and IBM account team members. We'd be happy to arrange a future conversation or another demonstration 
to show you how simple it is to enable this functionality in your environment. Thanks very much and have a great day.